Eventually, I've been saying this, eventually the Grand Rapids Police Department is going to kill someone and it's going to be a big issue. Why not get ahead of the curve and stop it before it happens? Why do we have to wait until, oh, what if, what if this, what if that? No, we need to stop it now. Patrick Leoya. But who was the 26 year old tragically killed by a Grand Rapids police officer on April 4th? Patrick was a loving person, he loved people. In his family, Patrick was revered, the oldest of six children. A program handed out at his funeral called him a gem, a jokester, someone with a passion for soccer, song, and dance. Half that program was written in Swahili, the native language of the Congolese national who spent almost half his life in a refugee camp in Malawi before moving to the States at age 18. My heart is really deeply broken. I didn't know, I didn't believe that in this country, that there is a genocide in this country. I didn't know. I didn't know that here in America, there can be an execution style to kill someone. And we should also, of course, mention that Liwea was also a father. He had two young children that he leaves behind. In the studio tonight, Doug Reardon, Fox 17 News. Yeah, we're going to take a look back to day one of this shooting death investigation leading up to today, where the case has drawn the attention of a national civil rights attorney. Monday, April 4th, around 8 a.m., a Grand Rapids police officer initiates a traffic stop on a car near the intersection of Griggs and Nelson Southeast. Police say the driver exited the car, ran away, and the officer gave chase. A lengthy struggle ensued between the officer and that person, and uh, the officer discharged his weapon, killing that killing the driver of that vehicle. During the struggle, the officer lost his body-worn camera. We can see that the camera is still on scene and it is still activated, so we are anxious to recover that camera and, uh, and review that video. The investigation was turned over to Michigan State Police. Later that afternoon, the city manager, mayor, police chief, and director of oversight and public accountability addressed the incident. The police officer involved in this by contract has 72 hours to make a, a statement to the Michigan State Police. That's uh, common in the police field uh, to give the officer two full sleep cycles so that they can give a clear uh, um, truthful response to the questions. Police stated the vehicle had a license plate not registered to that vehicle. Body worn and in-car camera footage were recovered as well as video from private sources. I intend to release the video as soon as feasible. Uh, my intention is to do so sometime next week. A neighbor told us she recorded this cell phone video after hearing a gunshot outside her home. It was right across the street, um, right over there by that wooden fence. He was on the ground. I'm um, just laying there and the cops were in the street. Tuesday, April 5th, police announced the victim of the shooting was 26-year-old Patrick Leoya. 
Wednesday, April 6, the NAACP Greater Grand Rapids branch demanded all video of the shooting be released for transparency. Thursday, April 7, Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker requested the police not release any evidence until the investigation is complete so it wouldn't be compromised. Friday, April 8, Patrick's father Peter told us through an interpreter the incident was not a traffic stop and Patrick's car had broken down in the street when the officer showed up. He claims Michigan State Police showed him dash cam video of the altercation and demanded the video be released as well. And Patrick Hand was on the back. And he took the gun. And put on the head. And they shoot Patrick from the back of the head. Because the video has not been released yet, 13 on your side can't independently verify these claims. Show the video! Show the video! We want the world to know! Saturday, April 9th, the community held a protest and candlelight vigil calling for justice. Sunday, April 10th, National Civil Rights Attorney Ben Crump, who's represented the families of Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, spoke at a forum in Grand Rapids. He continued calls for justice and has since been retained by Patrick's family. The night began with a peaceful march at 5.30. A group of well over 100 walked from close to Rosa Park Circle to GRPD and then on to City Hall for the meeting itself. The commission chamber was full of protesters with even more down here in Calder Plaza below. They could be heard chanting all the way up on top. That's nine floors up at the top of City Hall. Uh, Chief Eric Winstrom was a member of the crowd as well, with several speakers directly addressing him throughout the night. Each one of those speakers expressing demands for the video of the shooting, as well as the name of the officer who killed Leoya, saying it's been too long without answers. I am ashamed. I am humiliated. The shame that this city, my only home, brought death to this young man who came here with dreams for a future. You too should be ashamed. You should be weeping. You should want to turn loose all associations with the city government, the sham of a city government, because you're supposed to preserve and improve the life of the residents of this place. And instead, the folks who are obligated and are under your responsibility allowed for the extinguishing of a life instead. Africans, we are people who want peace. We want just to be able to provide for our families, go to school, work hard, be directors, do the best things we can do in this city. Stop with the political convenience and the appeasement of police union thugs. Buck the system used to unfairly shelter cops from consequences the rest of us would have to deal with. Hands behind your back. Okay. Come on, bro. I can't die for your own safety, man. Okay. Yo, Pat, Jesse, you good, right? Yo. Turn your hands behind your back. Okay. Don't grab him like that, though. I know, but I'm just saying, man. I'm a black man, too. I've been. Yeah. Man, come on, okay. man. 1915. Start more cars. Okay. Now, you say he's good, but, man, grab. Yo, what's up, man? No, just. I want nobody to get no get the keys. Stop. Okay. Stop resisting. Yeah. Get the key. No, he's good. He's not resisting nothing, bro. Okay, why you gotta do all that, bro? He's good, man. Let call the taser. No, like, like he good, like you can talk to him, bro. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he good, bro. Like, can you talk to him? Like, good, like, can you? Yeah. Stop grabbing him like that. No. Nah, he good, like for. Yo, you hit him too. Hit that shit. No, he ain't got no tasers. I see, I see that. Let's go, taser. Take it. 
anymore draws his firearm fires one round and uh, tragically kills Patrick in that situation now the world is divided yeah once again here we are yeah it's a very very tough situation and you know we really took the weekend to reflect on this situation and we see two very uh, opposing views that exist right now um, starting with the belief that this was an unacceptable escalation of force and an unacceptable use of lethal force against Patrick in this situation. And those who hold that opinion are citing several elements of the interaction, not the least of which was um, the guy had the wrong plates, mismatched plates. If he wants to evade arrest at that point, potentially sit back, call for backup, wait till other units arrive. And again, these are, you know, different departments have different policies, but to the average person looking at this, it's totally understandable how they would get, wait a minute, yeah. why did he walked away, he yeah. even walked away kind of casually from the officer, and the officer went hands-on. And then when that happened, he started to resist, of course, naturally. And then the officer escalated to go hands-on, go on the ground, and go control the situation. Couldn't keep him down the first time. Suspect gets up, and then the officer draws his taser from a dangerously close range at that. It's generally recommended not to use the taser from close range for this reason, right? It can be, it can have an exacerbating effect. It can be taken from you. So it's generally advised against to use the taser in close proximity, whether it be a drive stun or a standard kind of distant deployment of the taser. But in either case, the taser was deployed. It was grabbed by Patrick in this situation. He got a hold of it. They went down. And yes, he did gain control of the taser. He went to a prone position. And at that point, you have the officer on top where the officer does have the choice to disengage, right, at that point, and that's what people are citing, saying, hey, there wasn't a need for a lethal force. The subject was prone. Yes, they had, the subject had control of the taser, but was prone and was shot in the back of the head. Yeah, potentially disengage and even, even access your firearm and then stand by and see where the suspect goes from there. Right, because the, 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 the mere controlling, right, as they'll cite, the mere controlling of the taser doesn't necessarily mean imminent um, you know, serious bodily injury, SBI, or death for the officer. So when you talk about it in that perspective, in terms of the level of threat to the officer, when they had the opportunity to disengage, um, you know, there's a lot of people who feel like that escalation at that point wasn't necessary. You know, officers are trained to deal with people who are resisting arrest or resisting uh, them being able to put them in handcuffs. But you're not allowed, if you're a police officer, to shoot somebody in the back of the head just because they are resisting your command. So the family and the protesters in the streets calling for the officer's name to be released and for charges to be laid. Jennifer? So, John, police released those videos. What else has their response been, especially, as you say, with that call to release the police officer's name? Yeah, in fact, there have been, there were nine videos. What we were seeing there was a, a series of four that were put together. Uh, but let's uh, listen to the police chief as he describes their situation. So the question is, am I planning on naming the officer? And usually uh, over the past few days, that question has been framed. And if this was anybody but a police officer, you would have said the name. And I'm going to treat the officer like I would anybody else. We don't name suspects. If the officer is charged with a crime, we will name him at that time. But the short answer is no, I'm not going to be naming the officer. Is this Michigan 2022? In Michigan 2020? Or Mississippi 1952? The Reverend Al Sharpton, with Grand Rapids mayor and city manager sitting nearby, demanded police release the name of the officer who shot and killed Leoya after a traffic stop over an improper license plate. Talking about we won't release the name until he is charged. Every time a young black man or woman is arrested in this town, you put their name all over the news. For two hours, the thousand or so attendees listened to pastors, politicians, advocates, friends of Patrick Leoya. In the end, this day is about a family that came to America for a better life, only to have the life of their eldest son cut short by a police officer's bullet. Now, the Reverend Al Sharpton says he asked the Civil Rights Division of of the Department of Justice today to investigate this case. 
He says the Biden administration is aware of the death of Patrick Leoya. We will not leave this to local prosecutors. Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker has said that he is waiting for state police to complete the investigation before deciding on whether to file charges. We do not have to wait until the local prosecutors make their decision. We had a federal and uh, uh, state prosecution in George Floyd and got convictions in both. So the local prosecutor can think that it's all going to end with him. No, it's going to all begin at the same time. We are not going to see this covered up by local authorities. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who represented the Floyd family, says authorities in Grand Rapids have a chance to make a difference. We believe that the whole world is watching Grand Rapids, Michigan, and the leadership gets the right how this story will end. Will it be one where we achieved equal justice for Patrick Leola and others, or will it be remembered? And Reverend Al profoundly made the comparison, Michigan 2022 or Mississippi 1952. How will this tragedy be remembered? I pray that they will take advantage of the opportunity to say, Grand Rapids, we're better than what we saw in that video. Uh, execution to the back of the head. We reached Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker by phone this afternoon. He denied any cover-up and said that he does not know when the state police investigation will wrap up. Live in Grand Rapids, Ken Colker, News 8. Ken, thank you. After today's funeral service, Patrick Leoya's family said their final goodbyes to their son. News 8's Byron Tollefson was there with the family this afternoon, and he joins us live in studio. Byron? The family has been grieving ever since they lost Patrick on April 4th. But as you can imagine, today was especially difficult as they went to a gravesite to lay their son to rest. Those leading Patrick's graveside service said the true injustice will come out and the life of Patrick will not go in vain. A lot of other people came out today to pay their respects to Patrick and his family, including their attorney, Ben Crump, Kent County Commissioner Robert S. Womack, and Breonna Taylor's brother. Many were wearing sweatshirts with Patrick's face on the front and the words justice for Patrick Leoya on the back. Others brought flags of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Patrick's home country, while others held signs reading, it is our right to live. Here is what those attending the service had to say about this emotional day. I've been protesting for days straight, not sleeping because of this incident, and I just want to see peace. I want to see justice for this man. Um, he was tragically killed. You look at it from our point of view. What if that was your child? You know, what if that was your child shot in the back of the head? How do you expect him to feel? We have heard a lot about justice for Patrick. I asked both men what that means to them, and they say it starts with charging the officer who shot and killed Patrick. Byron, thank you. Members of the Congolese community were also at today's funeral sharing their tradition and culture in honoring Leoya. News 8's Emily Leonard is here with more on the sights and sounds of the ceremony. So a Congolese flag was draped over Patrick's casket today, a reminder that his family fled the violence-ravaged country to find a better life here in the U.S. A friend of Patrick's wrote and performed this song at today's ceremony. At times, people were standing up and swaying to the music. There were also calls for justice from the Congolese community. Patrick's blood will cry, will keep crying until true justice is done for him. As you can imagine, watching this video was especially traumatizing for those close with Patrick Leoya. After 14 years of friendship, Jimmy Barwin said Patrick was like a brother. They both immigrated from the Democratic Republic of Congo, excited about creating a life here in Grand Rapids. Like thousands of others this afternoon, Barwin live streamed the video showing Patrick's death, talking with us just moments later. You got something, buddy. 
He got somebody on the ground. He got somebody on the ground already sleeping. Why can't you just, you know, handcuff them or something? Yes, I understand there's a taser and all that stuff, but why not use any other legal force? You could have called for backup, anything. Why shoot him? Why kill him? What did he do to deserve that? And he was unarmed, no gun. I'm really sorry. I can't really speak right now. I'm feeling a lot of emotion. And it, it really hurts. It pains me. Every time I keep talking to her, I keep seeing his face. I keep replaying moments that we had dancing and all. It breaks me, man. How am I supposed to raise my kids here? And I don't have no kids here, but how am I, you know, how can I trust that they're going to be safe out here? Right now, I need your voices. I don't want you guys feeling bad for me. Because we can't be weak right now. We got to be strong. And the only way we can be strong is when we get justice. So we got to fight till the end. So I'm going to say this once again. Justice for... Patrick! Justice for... Patrick! Justice for... Patrick! Like we're not welcome. But all time there's a big family out there, you know, looking out for us. So the people that's right here fighting with us and fighting not just as only for my brother, but for all of us at the end of the day, because that could have happened to anybody. Anybody around the world that's dealing with police brutality. You know? It hurts we come to the United States to feel safe down here. Just to they tell us police are supposed to protect you. Police supposed to be there for you. Whenever you feel like you're in trouble, you call police. You feel me? But now, what are, what are they saving? Like, what are they serving us as, you know, a community? Pain and fear? We're supposed to be feeling protected. And all that. What is your message to Grand Rapids Police? They need to release the cop identity. They need to hold the cop accountable for every action that it did because we've seen the whole video. You on top of somebody and you're still screaming that you're in danger. How can that happen? How can you feel like you're in danger when you're on top of somebody? It don't make sense. You're not stupid. So the, the only thing I'm asking, and I feel disgusted that he's home right now, sitting home watching TV and still getting paid when he know he took somebody else's life that could have been his own son but just because it's a different skin color and I'm not even talking about skin color because it could have been any color but at this situation it was my brother that was killed a black man and it hurts and that hurts when Patrick just had an apartment he had dreams to say in my apartment, one of the rooms I'm going to be cutting hair and all that so I can provide for my kid. He just bought the car so he can go to work from A to Z and make sure that he's making his money. He was working at Lax. It hurts. We didn't come here to feel like we animals. We came here to feel protected. We came here to feel loved. We run from a third world country. Do you know how it feels like down there? All I want is justice for my justice. brother. All I want is transparency. We are tired, but we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep fighting. Every day, we're gonna be in these streets because it's our street. You'll be here on Saturday. Every day we're gonna be here until justice is served. Because I can't mourn right now. I'm not gonna mourn until justice is served. I won. And before the march started, members of the Royal Black Panther Party made sure to emphasize to the crowd that they wanted to remain peaceful no matter what agitators might be out. Do not engage. Do not engage. I don't care what they say. The rally was very organized and leaders even had hand signals to communicate with people at the back of the large crowd. Their first stop was in front of the Grand Rapids Police Department. Then they made their way down Ottawa Avenue in front of City Hall. Then they stopped briefly outside of the Grand Rapids Art Museum. We go stand close and we go pick our boys because that is what we do. 
and from place to place, chants could be heard as they walked. <laughs> there were a few tense moments when police blocked off a couple of roads to the crowd of demonstrators. The first was Fulton Street near Van Andel Arena. Just around the corner, police also had part of Ottawa Avenue blocked for a period of time. Meredith, everything is quiet now here in downtown Grand Rapids, but let me show you as we walk through the streets, you can see that businesses are still boarded up as the city remains on edge after the release of that deadly police shooting video. And despite tensions mounting and frustrations rising, things remain peaceful throughout the protests yesterday. Hundreds took to the streets in downtown Grand Rapids as they shouted things like justice for Patrick and Black Lives Matter, upset and disappointed about Patrick. Patrick being shot and killed by Grand Rapids police. We spoke with one woman yesterday who says more voices are needed to be heard. I think we had a great turnout tonight. We had a, a lot of people show up. Um, I'm going to be honest, not enough. We didn't have enough. Um, we need more voices. Overall, we had a great turnout. We, we came together as one. She went on to say that is so important for the community, the whole community, to come together and speak out against injustice. Now, officials say they're totally fine with people exercising their First Amendment right. They just want everyone to remain peaceful while doing so. But at the end of the day, it should not take a black man being executed in our streets in broad daylight for the city commission to notice that something is wrong. We have had people that work for the city tell us that they know that the Grand Rapids Police Department is racist. And what have they done since then? Nothing. Nothing. When we march to the commissioners, I want everybody to, to raise their voices, OK? It can't only be us on the front lines speaking up. Use your First Amendment, OK? Use it. And that's our intention today. We're here to send a message. My name is Allie, lived here my entire life. Um, I was here at the last meeting when it was shut down due to lack of decorum. Um, I watched a black mother bury her first son due to her son being executed by a police officer that we all paid with our tax dollars. And you wanna talk about lack of decorum because we're angry? because we've been coming to these meetings for almost two years straight, telling you exactly what would happen if you continue to ignore our cries. You failed Patrick Leoya. You failed this entire community. How many more people have to die before something is happening? Because I've asked before which one of us has to die, but clearly we already know. You, like, like Nico said, you come to these events where all the cameras are to shed tears for the family, but what are you really doing besides sharing crocodile tears? We've been crying for two years because we knew this is going to happen. We've been fighting for Patrick Leoya before we even knew his name because we knew that a bullet from the GRPD or a knee to the neck did not have a name on it, but it had a black face. I'm Nico, I live in Grand Rapids. Firstly, Rosslyn, um, you used to work at a center for troubled youth, residential home. You earned the trust of the community. Those people that you was watching when you was working there, they remember you, they was voting for you. They, they thought you was gonna protect them and you didn't. And that's disheartening. And honestly, all y'all knew what was gonna happen. Y'all ignored it because you, it seems like you just did not care. Y'all didn't care because some of y'all the people that was affected don't look like you. Some of y'all don't care because money talk louder than what what is right, doing what is right. 
I mean, Patrick cannot get his life back, but there's countless clips of many people coming up here saying that if you do not make GRPD take responsibility for them being violent towards peaceful community members, that somebody was going to lose their life. Y'all sat up here looking just as unbothered as you do right now back then and for y'all to sit up in a church the church out of all places and act like you did everything you could do to say you put all the policies in place to protect black people you know you will lie and that's not okay that's not okay i feel like your integrity should not have allowed you to sit next to patrick family at all that is so trifling It is the second straight Grand Rapids City Commission meeting that Mayor Rosalind Bliss ended early. It happened during tonight's public comment with activists calling for justice for Patrick Leoya. The mayor warned the crowd several times about cursing and interrupting during the public comment. And she said those who continued would be asked to leave. After several more minutes of disruption, the meeting was adjourned. Reg James has been making t-shirts and hoodies for black victims of violence since Trayvon Martin. In fact, some of his designs have been featured and archived by a few museums, and it's about to happen again, this time for his work on Patrick Leoya. Would you happen to have an XL hoodie that I... It's not exactly the calling that Reg James drove for. And it's, it's a really sad thing, because we got countless lives. And When he started his business, Reg James Clothing, back in 2020, he didn't think he'd be doing this. It's not really about just gear. It's about getting justice for Patrick. So getting justice for Patrick, we're going to get justice. The T-shirts and hoodies that have been relentless sightings at each rally and march for Patrick Leoya have come from Reg's studio. Two eggs and then a media. Partnering with one of Patrick's best friends, Jimmy Barwan, the duo of turned out t-shirts and hoodies by the hundreds, keeping Patrick's name and face alive and visible. But again, it's not the call the two thought they would have to answer. How many more t-shirts do we got to make? We don't want to do that. Right. You this know? is something I don't want to do. You know, I don't want to do this. Now I'm, there's enough to kind of do a whole exhibit around, unfortunately. Throughout history, clothing has been used as a marker of protest, as a sign of the times. George Baird with the Grand Rapids African American Museum and Archives, located just a block away from the Grand Rapids Police Department on Breonna Taylor Way, has been collecting protest artifacts for years. The shirts are the same. We, we collect them because of that too because it marks a certain time in history and so for us uh, it's a it's a great way to honor uh, people when people come in here to look back at this incident mm -hmm. you know what what information is going to happen what are they going to see the african-american museum is now in the process of selling and archiving reg's clothing for their collection the gr public museum is doing the same thing and they've already displayed and archived a few of reg's other designs including one he made in the wake of gr native brianna taylor's killing those designs will now become a permanent part of both museums' collections, and requests for the Leoya t-shirts have come from every corner of the world. <laughs> I've been having a lot of requests from Congo DRC, a lot of requests from Kenya, a lot of requests from South Africa, France. A portion of the proceeds from sales are going directly to the Leoya family. Reg and Jimmy are grateful for the interest and the support, and the chance to be a part of Leoya's story now and for history. They just hope the face they knew well will be the last one they have to put on a t-shirt. This can get the word out by putting them on hoodies and spreading the word on t-shirts. Then that's what I'm going to continue yeah. to do. Me wearing this, it's not only for Patrick, but it's for all of us. Because at the end of the day, this is about a human being. Yeah. And yeah. this could have happened to any one of us. And if you want those t-shirts, they go on sale today at the African American Museum at 87 Monroe Center or at the Business Exchange on 28th Street. How do you spell? Because how the hell you going to oppress us 
in the nation we done built. How the hell you got the audacity to deprive us of civil rights? Not only civil rights, but in our human rights. In the nation we done built for free. You keep talking about downtown, the hell with downtown. So if you want to see your downtown thrive, and if you want to preserve it and beautify it, I think you should charge the killer cop because I don't think it's going to stand too much longer. That's just me. Out of respect for the elders and the Leoya family, I wouldn't, you know, I ain't going to initiate no kind of violence or whatever y'all be saying, even though we not violent. Because as Al Sharpton said, we not troublemakers, we troublebreakers. But my thing about it is... It's not going to stand too long. Y'all remember what happened with George Floyd protest here? That shit went down in flames. Even though we didn't do it. Your language. Even it, huh? Please watch your language. No, I'm not going to watch my language. I got to, first, my, my first amendment right. I'm going to say what I got to say. Please, if you don't you like it, you this, have to remove me. I, I'm going to say what I got to say. I, but if you, if curse, you want I, to see your downtown thrive, what I think you should do is charge the killer cop. Okay. It's going to go down in flames. Thank you. And uh, Activists surrounded the police chief chairman then talking with him. It's been going on for more than an hour after the meeting was cut short by the mayor, and it's still taking place. Andrea Flores is there. She joins us now live with the latest. Juliet, halfway during public comment during the city commission meeting, Mayor Rosalind Bliss called for a recess as community members talked about the Patrick Leoya shooting death investigation. They want to see Officer Christopher Schur charged arrested and prosecuted. Now activists then started chanting and a few minutes into the recess more GRPD officers were brought into the meeting room. For more than an hour activists sp spoke directly to Chief Eric Winstrom asking him questions and making a list of demands. Some other demands include an end to qualified immunity for police officers, for Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker to recuse himself from the investigation and for police officers to have life insurance. Now before the meeting ended multiple people went up to the podium. Many of them were frustrated that the commission was talking about a downtown improvement project to talk to city leaders about the investigation. When y'all are talking about sidewalks and flowers, who cares about that? When our children are struggling every day in mental health and everything else that they struggle with, police brutality, violence, drug abuse in the community, and then y'all sit here with y'all attitudes and act like we're the problems. No, you guys are put in these positions to take care of the problems, but you're not being successful with doing that. Patrick's death has been a catalyst for the cries of the people. And the cries are being heard. Say his name! Now the demonstrators are leaving right now. They were talking with Chief Eric Winstrom for a while. Let's take a listen. Okay. I know a lot of people are. I mean, there were about 20 or so people inside the city commission room talking with Chief Eric Winstrom for more than an hour. This meeting started at 7 o'clock and it went all the way till 11 o'clock now, four hours. Reporting live in Grand Rapids, Andrea Flores, 13 on your side.
than a dozen then asked for the city to amend the proposed budget to move money out of the Grand Rapids Police Department. The little money that we took from the budget, take a lot more out. Take a lot more out. Like millions of dollars. Like, I don't know, the $9 million we proposed over the past few years that we've come up here and talked to you guys. And invest that in the communities of marginalized communities. And I am here as a humble reminder to let you know that the judgment of God who arts in the universal court is upon you. His judgment stands against you and his judgment stands with us. We want your thugs out our hoods so we can police ourselves. We don't need your institutions no more. We're gonna start boycotting. We're not gonna spend our dollars with you no more. We keep asking you for things, but we have a spending power of 22 trillion a year. Right, so I'm why gonna, are we okay, asking gonna... you to do for us what we have the power and resources to do for ourselves? It took, it took so long for them to release the identity of the officer. And the only reason why it was released is because we already knew. Based off of the very little information we had, we figured it out, it was Christopher Schur. Once again, you failed this entire community. You failed this community. And I can't, I, I can't even say it enough times for you to understand it because you never will. You will never understand what it's like to fear the police because they're not gonna go after you. They're not going to harass you. They're not going to arrest you for using your First Amendment rights. They're not going to do that to you. So of course it doesn't matter. And it's the fact that you've threatened to arrest people who have been rightfully angry before you even arrest the officer that killed Thank you, your time's up. Thank you, your time's up. I am 13 years old. I've lived in Grand Rapids almost my whole life. I'm gonna say it again, I'm 13 years old. All of you are adults. Adults, right? You can drive, you can drink, you can vote. I don't have that. When I asked my mom if I could be dropped off here, her response was, is it safe? Is it safe? You know, we had someone come up here and talk, don't teach our children to disobey those who are protecting us. I don't see them protecting me. If you wanna talk about those protecting me, I look to those who are standing right now because my trust is in them. I don't trust any of you. I don't trust any of the police officers because you have shown time and time again that we cannot trust you. I go to City High Middle School, just voted the top high school, top high school in the state. You know what they teach us? Teach us to speak up for yourself. We're IB learners, right? We're smart. None of you are smart. None of you can recognize murderers. You can identify that there is a problem, but you cannot fix it. I don't know much about the law again, I'm young, but I'm pretty sure an accomplice to a murder should be arrested. And right now, all of you sitting and doing nothing are accomplices to a murder. Because, please, please refrain from the, 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 the additional commentary. If you could let her finish. Thank I am you. sorry, they are they're fine. I'm still allowing please, to speak. Go ahead. Please, go ahead. I am frustrated, and frustrated can't even begin how absolutely terrified I am to live here. I'm expected, I'm expected to raise my kids here. I'm expected to go outside and walk my five-year-old little brother. God forbid we look too scary. God forbid he accidentally is wearing his hood and we get the police called on us because we are window shopping to go steal later. I'm not, I don't want to keep coming here. Trust me, this is not how I want to spend my night. I don't want to come here. I don't want to sit here and I don't want to have to beg you to stop killing people. That's not what I want to do. I have friends, I have other things that I could be doing and I'm sitting in front of a group of adults who think murder is okay. You can't sit here and tell me you don't think murder is okay because you're allowing it to happen. If you want to talk about God, you want to talk about Jesus, I'm a Christian. I don't know what God some of these people believe in, but it sure ain't mine. I, I have never read in the Bible where he said we should allow the people who are supposed to be protecting us kill us. I'm sorry, maybe I missed that scripture though. I'm not, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Please, please do not make me sit here and scream another name. Do not sit here and make me beg. And God forbid that name is mine.
not take a black man being executed in our streets in broad daylight. You earned the trust of the community. Those people that you was watching when you was working there, they remember you, they was voting for you. They, they thought you was gonna protect them and you didn't. Get the fuck out of here, man! <laughs>